Ah, hello. So glad you came around. It's always a pleasure to have your company. Welcome back to the Gallery of Curiosities. I remain, as always, your humble host, Osgood. Happy October. Spooky season. The best time of the year. Don't you agree? This evening's exhibit is, oh, how to put it, weird, noir, a little bit Elliot Ness, a little bit Lovecraftian cultist. You know the territory. And it comes to us by way of Mr. Ian Michael Bavian, who describes himself as new writer, long-time reader. He enjoys the work of Pratchett, King, Adams, and Wyndham, to name only a few. He was once an army officer and currently works as a criminal defense investigator. And when not working or writing, he spends his time with his wife, two sons, and an erotic border collie. So, let us brush down our flannel suits and put on our fedoras. Just so, because it is time to ask an odd question by Ian Michael Bavian. An odd question by Ian Michael Bavian. How fast is evil? he asked. But before I could answer, Agent Marcus shattered the door with a kick from his ambulator and chased legs and rushed in with his hand cannon barking. Three cultists were down by the time I picked my way through the jagged breach. Dark stains spread from their shattered bodies. The Webley Mark VII was a military sidearm effective against armored infantry and light vehicles. It did unspeakable things to cultists protected by cloth pajamas and a belief in an ancient sleeping god. No one knew how Agent Marcus got special permission to carry one instead of a standard-issue sidearm. Much of his story was lost to myth before I joined the Bureau. It was hard to tell what was true about him. Everyone had a different tale of how his legs were injured or how he could afford the ambulator walking contraption. He was a living legend, serving and clinging to sanity longer than any other agent. Common knowledge was that you left the Bureau in a pine box, a permanent vacation at the Dunning Asylum, or if you had any smarts, an early transfer. Few people accused me of having a large noggin, so... I racked my 12-gauge trench broom and uh, tried to keep up. I'm no greenhorn. I was a prohibition agent. Speakeasies, stills, and breweries were my specialty. I cracked a few skulls, broke some barrels, and peppered several stubborn bootleggers with buckshot. But the mayor was more afraid of ghost stories than he was interested in the virtues of temperance. Most of us Volstead boys got reassigned to the Bureau of Oddities. The mansion was a pile of brownstone heaped vaguely in Edwardian fashion. The interior was as vulgar as the exterior. A great stone monstrosity was clogged with exotic items from around the world. A menagerie of dead-eyed hunting trophies and tapestries from who knows where. A Persian rug in the foyer currently absorbing three unlucky cultists' blood, was worth more than a year's pay. The air was stale with a sour tinge of spoiled food. Fine dust hung thick in the air and shrouded every surface. And yes, the staff had been uh, the first sacrifices. The place was huge and could be home to any number of the sacrilegious bastards. Marble shrapnel stung my face, pulling me from my thoughts when several shots chipped away at the statue I hid behind. 
I spun, sending a few rounds of buckshot peppering the darkness. Learning that the cultists put some trust in bullets instead of blind faith comforted me like a wet blanket. Agent Marcus ducked behind a wall for cover and reloaded. Is evil swifter than an arrow ship? He asked as he turned and dashed into the darkness too quick for me to answer. Through was evidently his method of dealing with obstacles. The heavy electrocyte-powered ambulator, a collection of gears, assorted metal rods, and pneumatic pistons precluded any stealthy solution. The lumbering device thundered down the hall, iron feet gouging splinters of parquet flooring. Shots echoed through the mansion as other agents joined the fray. Then all went quiet. There were no calls to advance or for cover fire, no cries for help. It was not a silence you noticed with your ears. It seeped up from the soles of your shoes and invaded the body through exposed flesh to smother the mind. It was not the mere absence of sound. It was an oppressive force that strangled sound to silence. In that thick quiet, a lonely, lost message whispered past my ears and through my consciousness to speak directly to some primitive reptilian part of my brain. It was a single word. And that word was run. My legs obeyed the command before my mind recovered. I hurtled down the hall and careened off Agent Marcus, whose metal encased legs anchored him as he prodded a downed cultist. He shot me an annoyed glance and proceeded to a split T junction in the hallway. Could I outpace it trapped in my ambulator? I did not have an answer for him. I was beginning to suspect he didn't want one. It was a trick to occupy his thoughts, a psychic bassinet allowing him to remain alert while blocking just enough of the horror and carnage assaulting his mind. The question was a ward. How fast is evil? I whispered my new charm and reloaded. How fast is evil? I said it with more confidence than I felt, charging the shotgun. Scraps of noise poked and pricked at the heavy shroud of silence. How fast is evil? The distant staccato tapping of a tommy gun tore through the last wispy tatters. Taking courage from a firm grip on the oak four stock and warm metal receiver assembly of my shotgun, I swung my head to the left passage. Marcus nodded jerked his head to the right and gave me three, two, one fingers. We swept out, unloading a few rounds in our agreed directions. Marcus stomped off to the right, I forced myself down the left. My reluctant advance ground to a halt as Marcus's thundering gait grew distant. I don't buy into hoodoo, voodoo, or parlor tricks, but something was off. None of the walls appeared plumb. The angles of the door frames were misshapen. The very fabric of the mansion corrupted. How fast is evil? How fast is evil? My mantra to sanity failed as a silent blackness burgeoned down the hall. It moved with purpose, twisting the tortured geometry of the mansion to a new absurdity. In this dark realm, this void, the true image of that cultist was revealed. The dull, anti-light of the void stripped away the husk of their humanity to expose the adulterated forms within. A scream clawed its way up my throat as a living blasphemy shambled into view. My lips parted to release the cry that would take the last of my sanity with it. Something hard cracked the back of my favorite skull before it escaped. I mumbled, How fast is evil? Did not stave off my dim vision or prevent the floor from rushing up to meet me. Consciousness returned in fits and starts. A glimpse of darkened ceiling tiles slid by as my captors dragged me. 
then more darkness. I jarred awake as my heels thunked down steps of hewn rock. The bloated, misshapen limbs of my captors knotted around my arms as they pulled me deeper. I am not sure how long I was out. Somewhere along the way, I lost a shoe, and the rough stone floor wore my heel raw. They dumped me on the floor. I stumbled to secure my back against the wall, still punchy from the knock on the head. I was in an excavated cavern. The front wall was carved into a crude altar. A corrupted, human form stood in the center. It might have been a trick of the light, but something writhed and coiled beneath the priest's skin. His arms moved in a mesmerizing pattern that appeared to require a few extra elbows to perform. His attention was fixed on the altar. There, at the center of this most unholy place, hung a rip in the air, an ulcer in the very lining of reality. It bulged and rippled in rhythm with the priest. I had dozed off during the incantations and hexes portion of the background briefing. I could not recognize a word from his droning chant. Wooden with disbelief, I watched as two cultists dragged a flailing agent Parkvar into the rupture. They forced him head first down to his shoulders. He bucked and heaved in a panicked attempt to free himself. After a body racking convulsion, he finally went still. I swore I saw something slither up his nose as they pulled his muck covered face from the rift. With eyes fixed on the nightmare, I groped for any weapon as the body of Parvarin was heaved onto a pile of twitching corpses that had once been agents. How I hoped they were merely... they were merely... dead. I frantically rummaged through discarded clothing on the floor until my hands found the familiar form of a service revolver. How fast is evil... I raised the snub revolver and fired at the advancing cultist, dropping him on the spot. How fast is evil? I screamed as the hammer struck an empty chamber and the abominations rushed me. I pistol whipped the first head in range, fracturing the misshapen skull with a satisfying crunch. But the others swarmed and dragged me toward the altar. Time slowed as I approached my fate. The only sensation was the slow, distant pounding of my heart beaten with such force it vibrated the floor. It grew stronger as my end came near. I thought my heart had stopped as the vibration from the floor went silent, only to be replaced by the thunder of a Webley Mark Seven. I gawked as a round shattered the priest's head, spraying ropes of black sludge. The force of the heavy slugs slamming into my attacker's bodies knocked us all to the floor, pinning me under a mound of rot. The slow pounding from the floor resumed as Agent Marcus stomped toward me. How fast is evil? I rasped as he pulled me from the carnage. He sized me up for a long minute. Well... If you're lucky, it's slower than a bullet. This evening's reader was Mr. Isaiah Plovnik, a Boston-based performing artist with a steampunk soul. Raised on a healthy diet of Lego and great illustrated classics, the spirit of the retro futurist was fostered in him at an early age. He received an education in theater from Salem State University and has since been performing on stage or from behind a microphone all over the greater Boston area. Nicely done. Well, I think that is enough for one evening. This is such a busy time of the year for people like us. You should be on your way. Do take care, and come visit us next time at the Gallery of Curiosities. Gallery of Curiosities is produced under a Creative Commons International 4.0 non-commercial attribution no derivatives license. 
Story copyrights remain with the authors. Our theme song is Ashes Ashes by Deus Ex Vapora Machina. If you like the show, why not give us some stars and reviews on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher? It won't buy me a sandwich, but it is the least you could do. This episode was produced in October of 2022. For full show notes, visit us online at gallerycurious.com. By the gods, is it really October already? I still have a New Year's hangover.